and it's the off-season over here with Phoenix Hagen, and it's the off-season over there in the United States of America, where one man who promised me to go to the barber tomorrow uh, is having a good day, is enjoying his last couple of days for the off-season. His name is Tyler Stevens Moore, and uh, we're happy to have you on board for the 24-25 season and to get off and get right started. Uh, Tyler, hey, let us know. Why the heck did you choose that tiny little town of Hagen to be your starting point for your pro career? Man, honestly, it was, you know, obviously, first, before I start, just, you know, I just want to thank you guys and thank the organization for, you know, giving me a chance to, you know, obviously complete a dream. And really, I chose Hagen because, you know, just the consistency from coach uh, Chris Harris, um, you know, he communicated to me the most. I really liked his energy, his vibe. Um, I was able to get a little glimpse of a couple of games, uh, luckily able to get a couple of glimpse of the game. And I saw just how fast paced and all the energy from the crowd and how together everyone played. And they were very unselfish. And that's the type of brand of basketball that I like. So just felt like, you know, the great fit. Talked to my parents about it and just, you know, just off of, you know, just feeling and, you know, I want to win. And you guys did it. You know, you guys had a hell of a year last year. And, you know, I'm just I just want to bring some of my talent to, you know, help the team win and, you know, just fit right in with everybody. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, turning pro is always an adventure, uh, especially yeah. with, with in, in your case, I guess there's been not just one offer from Hagen flying in. So how in the world have you been able to digest all that input and and you know, separate all those offers and, and navigate through the decision making. Take me into this decision making process. Oh, man, honestly, had a notepad. So it took a lot of notes, man, a lot of notes from, uh, you know, the teams that were talking to me. And surprisingly, it wasn't it wasn't a lot. It wasn't it wasn't as much as you think. It was probably a, a three, you know, three multiple choice question. But, you know, obviously, it just came down to best fit and that was pretty much it. Just take the right notes, take down the notes, talk to my parents, obviously. I talked to my friends a lot, and I talked to a lot of close, um, you know, ex-high school coaches and, you know, my college, my old college coaches that I can say now, my old college coaches. So that was pretty much which helped break down the decision a lot more. Yeah. But did you or have you been able to reach out to somebody who's been who's already been playing in Germany or even in Pro A or? Oh, well, yeah, sorry. Also that I, I go to I go to a couple of like open gyms or like pro runs on Long Island. So I have, you know, I talk, I've gotten to know a lot of good basketball players and some great basketball players who, you know, obviously they played in the G League here. Some have or some have played overseas for six years. So I've talked to a lot of guys. And, you know, when I was hearing from Hagen uh, at the time, I told them, you know, I heard from one team, Hagen Pro A Division Two. They were like, hey, that's a that's a great start, great start of a of a uh, division. Um, I had one guy who he never he he's never been to Hagen, but he's been to other parts of Germany. He also said a lot of good things about Germany in general. So that kind of you know helped me settle in a little bit more. And it was honestly a destination, one of the destination areas that I really wanted to 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 be in. Yeah, I think, and that's something I'm not saying just because I'm here, but I always say this when we, I mean, over the years when you have connections through uh, with people from you know other basketball countries and so I, Germany overall is a great starting point you know um, because just competitive wise and and the the entire community within I mean the, the people are just okay you get paid on time stuff like this is important especially when you come yeah. in as a as a as a rookie uh, what what what's the the biggest piece of advice that uh, coach Ford gave to you the biggest piece of advice, man, yeah. honestly, he, he would just, you know, just, he would just always tell me, you know, just to have a lot of trust in yourself and, you know, don't worry about certain outcomes, just continue to play hard and good things will show up. That's good. Yeah. And at the end of the day, as one uh, wise international player once told me, hey, at the end of the day, when you come in, play the game that got you the job. Don't don't try to, to do something fancy yeah. or be something exactly. you're not. Uh, be who you are and bring to the table what or try to bring to the table what what got you the job. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, when we look at at your uh, college career, I think it's. I mean, you had a tough road to walk, Tyler. I mean, I mean, we're talking about somebody who's who's finished high school. I figure 
is super happy, super hyped up to, to join college, to go to university, have that, that life on campus, and yeah. midway through the season, bam, Corona strikes, COVID strikes. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about this experience. What what did that do to you from, from, from a playing standpoint and especially from a mental standpoint? And so, as you know, freshman year is typical freshman year, obviously for a normal basketball player like myself and a lot of like a lot of other guys you come in you obviously you're just trying to find you know find your way you know it's going to be a tough battle so you know you have an okay year freshman you could always put behind you you know it doesn't matter about certain stats because you know you could just say it's your freshman year so when COVID hit we ended up losing a lot of you know a lot of my you know obviously my close teammates there were older guys veteran guys and you know it was time for them to you know they felt it was best for them to move on so they all hit the transfer portal. So I was in the transfer portal, started to, you know, strike, really. And they all left. So obviously me as a young, as you know, a confident young guy, I was kind of like, oh my, oh man, like this sucks, but like this is a chance for me to step up. And I feel like, you know, I can prepare and be ready to step up and do what I have to do. But obviously COVID, you know, there wasn't a lot of access to a lot of gyms and everything like that. And I'm a big gamer. So I would say majority of my time, I did game a lot, but I did do a lot of stuff outside. But, you know, you can only do so much, you know, so much ball handling. You know, you got to shoot the ball, too. So I, I couldn't really shoot that much. I have a hoop outside, but, you know, it's not it just wasn't it wasn't the same like shooting in the gym. So when we got back to school for COVID, uh, man, it was a big kick in the ass, man. Big kick in the ass. Wasn't prepared as much. You know, I gained I gained some weight. I know I'm skinny, but I gained some weight. You know, I, I looked physically strong, but wasn't the, you know, was the, my eating habits weren't the best. So I wasn't really moving that fast on the court. Um, honestly, wasn't shooting the ball well, to be honest. And, you know, I lost a lot of, lost a lot of confidence as a basketball player that year. It was really tough. COVID was uh, arguably the toughest year of my life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. For most of us, it has been uh, yeah. on, on so many levels. Uh, yeah. Two questions come to mind. Uh, mm -hmm. Question one, what games did you play the most during during lockout time? Oof, man. What games did I play the most in? Yeah. During, during COVID? Oh, man. Uh, video games, right? Yeah. Oh, man. I played uh, Call of Duty Warzone. That was probably the number one game. It had to be. That's all I play. Call of Duty, man. Call of Duty. And I'm really good at it, too. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I can okay. back it up. I can back no. it up. A little bit of 2K, but we didn't really play. Me and my friends didn't really play 2K. It was really just, it was really Call of Duty, man. All day. After you work out, you know, stay up late at night, wake up in the morning, do your little workout play in the afternoon, go eat dinner, go eat lunch, play again. It was, it was crazy. It was crazy. Uh, that's also, I don't know if we have any COD guys on the team, but hey, we'll, we'll figure that out over, over the course of the season. Oh yeah, uh, I'll get them to play. I'll get them to play for a little bit, for sure. <laughs> uh, the second question is, um, and, and that's by far the more important question, is um, because I heard that from a lot of coaches, once COVID got better and, and they were able to return to the, to the arenas and to the gyms for practice and for games, was that Many coaches told me about, hey, when the players came back, they were individually stronger, better, because everybody was working out and doing their own shit and stuff and working on their craft individually. But they really had to relearn how to play together. How did you, how did you experience this, uh, that thing, when, it, when you guys as a, as a team, as a squad came together again? Yeah, yeah man. I mean, shoot, I bet you that coach had way more returners than we did that year, man. We came in with a lot of new faces, so it was hard from the jump. And it took, you know, it took a while for us to play as a team, honestly. I felt like, you know, we probably didn't, I don't even think we got to that level, to be honest with you. I know we had our little groups, but like, I think as a team, we weren't even close to playing, playing together that year. It was just a tough, it was really a tough year that year. Yeah. Well, what did you guys do to, uh, get better in this regard or get over that, you know, or was there any special team bonding involved or how did you, how oh, did you guys man. manage that? Uh, yeah, we kind of, we really just hung out a lot in the dorms, man. I can't, I can't lie. We did. We all hung out. We all gelled. Uh, 
you know, obviously off the court, everything was really, really cool. Uh, played, we played a couple of video games here and there. A lot of hangouts in the dorm rooms and the living rooms, watching certain basketball games, as much as we could do, really. Not not so much adventure off campus. Most of us didn't really have that much cars. But, you know, when it came down to grocery shopping, whoever was able to fit in the car, that was also awesome, too. So, yeah. Uh, awesome. And, and one thing that, that caught my attention that you touched on earlier was uh, you said, uh, hey, as a confident young man heading into this university or heading into this this college experience, where does that confidence come from? Is it from your parents' side or was it just the, the upbringing in Queens or was it a, a little bit of both? Where, where does that come from? Confidence, man, honestly, for me, it came through pretty much everyone that I've encountered who's really, really close to me and who's gotten to know me. I myself didn't really have a lot of confidence. I kind of just, you know, I let hard work do the talking. So when it came down to basketball and I see how the way people look at me and how they talk about how I'm going to have a bright future, I kind of just started to, you know, always keep that as a like an, an igniter in my heart. Like, you know, knowing like no matter what, just just keep going. And, you know, good things are good things are bound to happen. So obviously, the older I've gotten, you know, the more I've kind of held myself accountable and, you know, just really just a lot of self-talk and saying, you know, you're a heck of a like I'm a great person. And, you know, I just had to add in the part that I'm a great, you know, like like that I'm a dog, you know, I'm a dog, I'm a basketball player. And, you know, I could do a lot of things and, you know, just keep keep working hard and keep playing hard. Yeah. Has there been any, so to speak, proof of work outside uh, high school and college basketball? Are we, I mean, talking about playground basketball. I know playground basketball is huge in New York, huge in in Queens. Uh, yeah. A couple of years ago, I had to had to do with the um with a player or I've been working with a player um, who came from Brownsville mm -hmm. and he was like, come on, hey, when you learn to play basketball on those NYC playgrounds, yeah, come on, that there's, there's no play on, place on earth you can't play. Oh, so yeah. uh, how was your, your playground upbringing? Is there, is there oh, anything? Man. I lived did did right you play a lot? Yes, I did. So I lived right, I lived a block away from the park in Queens. So what park? give me a name here. Uh, Baisley Park. Okay. Yep. So it's Baisley Park. Uh, I lived a block away from it. You know, I had a three, I really had two, well, three, well, actually I'm lying. It was a whole block, a whole block of friends, but you know, it was just, there was three of us, Akeem, uh, Terrell and Detoni at the time. And you know, my boy Akeem, he was, he was the motivator. He always got us outside early in the morning, man. He was, he's Arguably, arguably one of the reasons why I have such great habits, you know, he just, you know, woke me up in the morning, would ask my mom if I could come outside to play some basketball. He always got everybody outside, man. I love that dude so much. He he just, he got everybody outside. And, you know, um, pretty much every time you hit the park, you know, it's always tough. You got the older guys, you got the complete old heads, you got the, you know, the, the stronger, bigger, faster, but, you know, they teach you a lot of lessons and they give you a lot of lessons on their life and, you know, what to, what not to do. And, you know, obviously what we should do. So, you know, you, you get a lot. You get a lot of life skills and you also, you know, get better at basketball, learn how to take a couple of hits on the concrete. So it's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, it's, and it's always meant in a good way. I mean, mm -hmm. when, when you're, you know, in your neighborhood, so to speak, uh, because everybody, well, most of the people know who you are and and hey, they, they care for you and they want you to do good. So hey, yeah, okay. it's a, it might end up in a little bump and bruise over here or a little shoving over there or a dirty foul over there but at the end of yeah. at the end of the day it's always like it's it's not like they want to teach you a lesson in, in a bad way it's just mm -hmm. it's it's they want to give you a good learning experience yeah that, that you can carry on with uh for life um the thing is what what, what caught my what what really caught my attention uh when we talk about your your high school days at uh, Long Island, uh, Lutheran, was, I mean, there's a ton of great names, a ton of great people who attended that school. Yeah, I mean, yeah. to, to trim down the list, I mean, I, on my list that I have right in front of me now are five people, uh, but I truly believe that over here in Germany, the most, or the one that most people know is Bill Wennington. At least the old heads do know him, yeah, you know, yeah, because yeah. He, he played along with MJ uh, with the Bulls in the 90s. Um, but the, the point I'm trying to make here is it seems like um, Long Island Lutheran is, is when, when you attend that school, you're destined to go to St. John's. 
Oh. <laughs> because when you look at all the all the more or less famous players that attended your high school and they went mm -hmm. on to to uh, to uh, to follow a college career, most of them went to St. John's. Yeah, so, man. two part question over here again: How come you did not end up there, and how come you chose or went on to to pursue uh, a career in, at Stony Brook? Oh man, well. The easiest point is I wasn't even recruited for that, man. I don't know if I was, I don't know. I Somebody mean, hey, they, was they messed, damn wrong. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. They messed out for sure. But, you know, yeah, just wasn't, you know, obviously wasn't recruited uh, by them. Uh, Stony Brook came into the picture like a couple months into my senior year. And, you know, they were, like I said, again, with the same thing with, uh, you know, with you guys, they were, you know, the most consistent talk to me a lot um the assistant coach coach weber that's my guy as well um you know he just you know he made things a lot easier during that whole process and it was a brand new process for me as well and you know he just you know talked to me like family and you know i appreciate him a lot you know wouldn't wouldn't have been here without if he you know didn't communicate uh so well so so it was him recruiting you back in the door days or was coach gino <laughs> ford already involved because he started his journey at Stony Brook the yeah. same year as you did. So, yep, yep. So that's the so that's the thing. So Coach Weber was, Coach Weber and Coach Ford were both under Coach Bowles, who now coaches at Ohio uh, University. So Coach Bowles was recruiting me at first with Coach Weber, and then he ended up leaving after, I think, yeah, after they lost in the playoffs in March. Or early March or probably late February ish. So then Gino ended up taking the head coaching job. And then um, Coach Weber stayed again. And then Coach Weber hit me up instantly and said, Hey, we still, you know, I'm staying. You know, we got the same group and the whole and the same group of guys stayed as well. So I felt like, you know, something, it was definitely something uh, good was bound to happen as well. You know, obviously I probably would have went another direction if all the guys would have transferred and they all would have left. But the fact that the whole core group of the guys, all of them, every single one of them, they all stayed. I was like, okay, this is, you know, this is this is the right thing to do. I'm gonna stay, stay with this team. I'm gonna talk to Coach Ford. He actually came to the house uh, once or twice, so I got to see him face to face. And I've seen him when I came on my visits too before I committed. But actually, him driving up here to talk to me, you know, it meant a lot. Um, it meant that they still, you know, were still pursuing me and still wanted me to be a part of the team. So, yeah, it made the job a lot easier. Um, on one hand. When you have a scenario like like this with a lot of not too many changes, but when you say, hey, you have the, the nucleus, the, the core group of guys is returning for for the for next season, one could say, hey, cool, that's a lot of stability over there. On the other hand, if everybody leave leaves, it's a lot of you know a lot of open spots and a lot of playing time that I can that I could grab as a as a freshman coming in. So where there's this this overall a uh, positive and forward-looking approach on your side uh, come from? Oh man, that's just that's just my character. That's just how you know. That's just how I you know. I can't even say that's how I've been raised. I just think that's just pretty much just a feeling I just was just born with. I guess uh, you know, just you know, you know, understanding that there's always you know there can be some negatives, but there's always you know you always got to look at it from the, from a positive standpoint. Um, Obviously, if we were to lose all those guys, and obviously from playing at Lujai too, I felt like I was, you know, definitely ready to, you know, get into the picture of maybe having to step up a little bit earlier. But obviously, those guys ended up staying. So, and I'm very comfortable with learning from them. Obviously, it's a big adjustment being a skinny, 173 pound freshman coming in to play against, you know, obviously mainly grown men and obviously stronger kids, my stronger, you know, guys my age, bigger, stronger. So. You know, just being prepared, really. And it's just about my character. Just staying prepared and, you know, obviously having the utmost confidence in yourself. Yeah. Well, uh, but, I mean, it's a totally different topic now, but do you feel like like you're well prepared now to, to hit the pro stage when it comes to oh. the mindset, your craft as a basketball player? From what I've seen on, on tape and from the pictures that were sent to me, you don't look as skinny as back in the days anymore. Oh yeah, um, no, no, no. <laughs> so, so, what, where's your, how on a, on a scale of on on one to ten, how ready do you feel to to hit the pro stage? Man, I feel like, honestly, I feel like a ten, ten out of ten. I feel like I'm ready. Um, you know, I just think the biggest thing for me is obviously just learning certain concepts, and obviously the IQ is different 
And I've always talked about that, uh, about overseas basketball. I was a big fan of, of how a lot of dudes just have, you know, just a lot of smarts for the game and, you know, just make the right reads and, you know, a lot of great passing uh, and, you know, a lot of free playing basketball, you know, not everyone feels so restricted. Everyone's just playing. Everyone's going to make mistakes, but, it, you know, strong, a lot of strong mental out there. So on to the next play and, you know, just focus on winning and, you know, the culture is great. The culture is great. That's also the big thing too. Yeah, true. And try to control what you can control. You know, exactly. If, I mean, if you play more or less free on, on the offensive end and you have a great shot, but you miss it, hey, it's still a great shot. You can't miss, mm -hmm. you, you can't hit them all the time. But yep, hey, exactly. as long as you took a great shot, okay, if you miss it, you miss it. But yeah. beforehand, there was the, the right decision, the right play call, whatsoever, the, the right uh, read uh, when it comes to, to reading the, the defense. So uh, well, what you always can control is, hey, Hustle on defense, communicate, be there for your teammates, whether you're on the floor or on the bench cheering them on, and stuff like this. Uh, yeah. and, and try to develop good habits over over the course of the season, whether it's as an individual or or as a as a group. Um, yeah, I exactly. And I think that's that's where you're gonna have so much fun uh, in, in your first pro year. Um, plus, what I always try to i mean it's not a piece of advice i'm not in the in the spot or in the position to tell to give people advice but but i always say is like hey enjoy to the fullest because you only have one rookie season there's only this one this one year where it's going to be a first for you everyone everything that happens later on is you know it's it's different yeah you know yeah it's always like this when you're playing let's say for instance when you play call of duty for the first time it's always special oh, when you, you know special, when you play yeah. when you play a map again over again and again and again you will never have this first time experience it's never going to be you, you're never going to have that, that same feeling again and yeah. uh and and that's what makes a first year so so special yeah, exactly. um outside of basketball what's what's the one or two things are uh, where you say, hey, I don't know what's what will be thrown at me. What's 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 the one or two things where you say, hey, I'm, maybe it's not worried about, but uh, let's say a little uncertainty is is involved. Oh man, shoot! I think I've been playing basketball my whole life, man. So it's like you know, you sometimes don't think about you know life outside of basketball, like what would life be if I wasn't an athlete in general? So, you know, obviously figuring out what career path, you know, when basketball, when the ball stops bouncing, what my career path is truly going to be, you know, cause obviously I went to school, I got my master's in business. Uh, I, you know, I've done a lot of, obviously I've just done a lot of school. So, you know, I, I really like marketing a lot, but well, I like marketing and let's say if I'm able to play basketball for 12, 13 years after that, am I going to like marketing the same way I did now? Probably not. So just, but I do know I'm going to be in the business field. Uh, I really don't want to work in the office though. That's the only thing I don't want to work in the office for a while, but who knows what that, what that, you know, when that time comes with what, what, what might be going on. So I would say definitely just figuring out just a little uncertainty and figuring out what my true, you know, passion and the you know and the business side of things is going to be yeah but that maybe that's something that comes over time oh yeah it'll come over time for sure over, over the years mm -hmm. and uh speaking from only from my own experience uh the way you you look at things and your view and thing on things it changes from time to time i mean mm -hmm. given given the fact that um you will absorb so much stuff uh whether it's the during the upcoming season or within the next five years or within the next 10 years. And, and once those 10 years have, have passed by, you look back and see, hey, I'm a different person now. Um, you know, a couple of friends of our, uh, and a couple of friends of mine and I, we always say, hey, we're not getting older, we're just getting better these days. You know, once you're, you're past a certain age, it's like, yeah, sure, you could say you're getting older, but hey, you have... You have uh, so much experience, whether it's uh, your, your your business or your craft or on the personal side. Um, 
and and that's I think is a, a healthy way to, to look at things. You know? Yeah, for sure. And and the experience that you're able to uh, that you're gonna have over the the next nine to eight uh, eight to nine to, to ten months over here as a as a rookie, um, this is something that that you will profit from. Maybe your entire life. Maybe there there's something that you're gonna learn where you say, hey, I'm gonna carry that with me. For, for the remainder of my life and, yeah. and then be, be a sponge be a sponge absorb things and, yeah. and move on from there that's sure. that's a good thing so when packing your bag to to come to a close now uh before you're packing your bag uh coming over here to to germany what's the the one or two things that have to be in the, in the suitcase that what's the one or two things you can't leave behind Man, obviously you can't leave behind. You can't leave behind no underwear. No, nah, I'm just kidding. Let's uh, obviously that's that's gonna be packed, obviously. But the one or two things, man, honestly, shoot, basketball shoes for sure, and um, my my game assistant, man. Those are the two things that's gotta come over. I'm sorry, those are the two things. I'll make sure those are packed in quickly too, quickly. Yeah, and don't forget to bring switches. You know, because you don't oh, have yeah, different. Uh, different adapters over here in Germany. Yep, yep, for sure. Don't worry, I got that. I, I actually can't. Uh, I actually went to Europe my freshman year of of college. Yeah, we did a uh, a nice Euro trip, so we went to Barcelona, Valencia, and Paris. So I already know I gotta, you know, I gotta bring the little the different uh, switches. I'm I'm locked in on that. Nice. Who did you play back in the days? Or was it just a city tour and you've just been sightseeing or did you play we actual did, games? We, we did, yeah, we played we played um we played uh teams in each of the uh spots that we went. I can't even tell you the exact uh names. But okay. pretty solid team. They were they were they were they were all right. Nothing nothing too like not not any hard elite elite team, just you know, just but regular you guys. played men's teams or collegiate teams? Or oh, youth we played teams the, even. We played, we played the men's teams, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, we maybe. played the men's teams out there, but they were probably they were maybe lower, kind of like the lower level ish guys out there. Yes. So that was that's all I could get. I can't even give you the exact names of the teams we played. You know, I was just enjoying. I was just enjoying my time, man. Just trying to fit in with the team. You know, enjoy the sightseeing, enjoy the, the nice energy out there, and you know. When it came down to the games, there was a lot of nerves. I probably took it a little too. Uh, I was a little too nervous for them. Now that I think back on it, should have just had a lot more fun and just played freely. But you know how it is as a freshman. You come in, you don't want to make no mistakes, no turnovers. Yeah. You think it's a business trip when really it's you know slightly a business trip, more like a team building. Just enjoy the time, especially with our coach. He's really chill. Coach Ford is chill, so it was good. Uh -huh. That's awesome. I got a deep dive into into the Stony Brooks uh, archives to to figure out what teams you guys played back in the days. I, I believe there's there's one or two articles that uh, should should help us out with the with the team names uh, yeah. that you played. Awesome. That's that's awesome. I mean, if you have a Euro trip like this, um, I mean, if you if you really have a chance to to stroll around the city and see something or hit the cafes the local cafes and so to yeah. to enjoy some some spanish food or uh you know some some french uh, fromage you know mm -hmm. some some french cheese uh that, that's awesome i mean and yeah. and the thing is it's all because of that orange that little orange ball you know exactly yeah and that funny that the the passion for a kid's game is taking you places exactly it was funny um when i went to the luhai summer camps when i was younger um one of the coaches you know came in and you know you know you have your little big meetings with the teams before you disperse to your groups he you know he told us he said this basketball right here this basketball could take you a lot of places you know and obviously as a kid you're like how the heck can this basketball take me a lot of places and you know Obviously, the older you get, you know, you end up in places you never thought. And it's it's crazy, man. It really helps you travel, helps you build great connections, meet, you know, great people that, you know, obviously come and go. That's the part of life. But, you know, you they'll always be a part of your, you know, always be a part in your heart and everything. So it's just, yeah, man, basketball is awesome. Yeah, it's just just pretending. And it took you to a place called Hagen, which is, yeah. and I don't know if you already know this, it's the headquarter of the German Basketball Federation here. 
Oh, shoot. I didn't know that. Welcome to World Champ Town. Oh, yeah. We need one of those. <laughs> we need one of those. Hey, this is, this is awesome. Are you, are you going to follow the, the Olympics over the summer? Yeah. Yes, for sure. 100%. Um, so give me your honest opinion now mm -hmm. and have in mind that, uh, we are able to, to within the first couple of weeks, you know, when you first sign your, your contract from, mm -hmm. um, from an employee, from an employer standpoint, you can always terminate the contract. So, uh, you, you better, you better watch out what you're answering now is, uh, how, how do you, how would you rate the, the U.S. team's uh, chances against us world champs at the Olympics? Man, I think it's going to be a tough, I think it'll be a tough game. Uh, I think it'll be a, a very fun, energetic game. Um, I do believe if, <laughs> if Team USA's players are, are hitting their shots and actually playing some defense, I think, I think we, I think we could win, man. I think we could win, you know? We got a lot of great players, a lot of good players, but it goes both ways. True. You know what I'm saying? True. I think if they think, you know, they can't take anything, you know, they can't take anyone lightly at all, you know, and it goes to show you there's a lot of good basketball players in this world. It's not just Team USA, you know, so, you know, everywhere has gotten better. It's not like the, the dream team back in the day and they just came in and just was able to just, you know, manhandle everybody. Everyone has gotten better over there uh, in Europe. So. You know they can't take it lightly, so we'll see. It's exciting to watch. We'll see. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be so much fun. The thing is, I think the major difference is, uh, nobody outside the U.S. is starstruck anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, maybe, maybe LeBron a little uh, uh, maybe, bit. Maybe yeah, yeah. Maybe but LeBron a little, but other than that, I mean, come on. The the ongoing discussion is what the heck makes Steph Curry so special. I mean, he's not tall, he's not fast, he's not super athletic, but he can shoot the heck out of that basketball. Oh, yeah. And his handles are just just Insane. crazy. Insane. Insane. Yeah. I think that's that's when we compare this US team to let's say the 92 generation. Uh that's I think it's maybe that's maybe the, the biggest difference that that all the other teams are not starstruck anymore. Everybody knows it. Hey, okay. We will working we can play too yep, which exactly. you, yeah but but uh, as you said rightfully said it's going to be so much fun when when these yeah. two two powerhouses uh collide uh before i let you just go don't, one just don't just don't clown me though if they somehow win don't don't clown me don't make no, fun i don't me, you know no, no. <laughs> you gotta give credit where credit is i know due. i gotta I mean, hear i'm gonna hear for a while so and I, so, you know, I'm just, you know, I'll take the punches, but let's believe we win, you know, I'll, I'll definitely do the same. So just, <laughs> and, yeah, the U.S. won way, way enough world championship titles, uh, like back in the day. So, so for, from, from, uh, 23 for the next four years, we'll celebrate this, this title, yeah. <laughs> um, and go and write, write it down. It's, it's going to be awesome. Um, very last question, Tyler, before I let you go. Yeah. Um, is the, when, when you say, hey, when I return back home uh, next summer um, and there's the local, the, the local newspaper uh, writing a huge article uh, about your first pro year, what should be the headline? What do you, what, what would be your wish to be the headline for for your first pro year? Yeah, I wish for the headline. Jeez, I got to think about this one. Um, man, shoot. I think, obviously, like anyone's dream, I think it would be rookie standout. Uh, rookie standout helps Hagen uh, bump up to the BBL, man, and returns home. Returns home. <laughs> That's victorious it. yeah returns <laughs> home victorious so that's that's obviously the goal man big goals big goals ahead for us as well that's a long headline but we'll take it yeah 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 it'll be able awesome. to fit somehow or just rookie st maybe rookie standout tsm standout one of those <laughs> <laughs> and we keep it towards him and we keep it like like uh andrew schultz once said hey just print the headline nothing else just print the headline that's all we need <laughs> rookie standout Tyler Stevenson's more helps 
Felix Hagen promote to BBL due to his 50 point performance in the last <laughs> whatever it may be, something like this. <laughs> Just print the headline, nothing else. Awesome. <laughs> Tyler, hey, thanks for your time, man. Can't wait to, to see you over here in person and uh, enjoy the rest the, the last couple of days as yeah, as a college Thanks. senior enjoying his off season and uh, yeah. life as a pro begins in August. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, JB, man. See you soon. See you in a couple of weeks.